Elon Musk has come to the defense of Dilbert creator Scott Adams. CNN reports Elon Musk tweets support for Dilbert creator after racist tirade. Well, anybody who actually listened to what Scott Adams said in full context and him addressing the issue on Hotep Jesus's show would know that he was actually making the opposite point. Now, maybe that was lost on me yesterday because I went over the news. I watched the video clips and then many people said, Tim, you didn't actually listen to the full context. And I said, interesting. There was a, a few clips I saw, a few statements I saw, and Scott Adams saying certain things that I saw. And so I said, OK, well, let me check the full context of what happened. Full stop. Let me give you the big picture before we get into the nitty gritty. Videos go viral. The creator of Dilbert, it's like one of the most famous comics ever, is on video saying something like white people should move away from black people, get the hell away from them. There's no fixing this and that he's doing it. Things like that. Don Lemon agrees. The polls show it in the fuller context. What he's saying is there is, in essence, a racial industrial complex tweeting, uh, tweeted, tweeted this out, actually, someone else's Twitter thread about this, where you have increasing tensions between races based on the media. And that his view is that you shouldn't be discriminatory against any individual, that you shouldn't blame an entire group of people for these issues. But the problem is, according to the polling data, you are seeing worsening race, race relations that are creating real risks between people. I do not 100 percent agree with the way Scott Adams goes about talking about race relations and how to address this. But the media, of, of course, is not showing you the full picture. What Scott Adams said in full context was this. If you are a black man and you see a a city that is 50 percent black and 50 percent white and you go there, many of these companies want diversity and will be looking to hire more black men and women and Asians and Latinos. But there is a large pool of black candidates applying for the job. If these companies are basing things on race, you're not going to get a job on the merits because you are now competing with half of the population of that city. He says, if you go to a city that's all white with very little black people and these companies want diversity, they will hire you based on race. So he says, my advice then, if that's how they want to do it, then you should go to predominantly white areas get hired by companies because you'll be at the top of the list instead of the bottom. And it's it's disgusting. But then he says, you know, who disagrees? And I'm like, okay, I don't know how I I don't know how to phrase a response to that in terms of agreeing or disagreeing. What I can only say is the system is completely broken by psychotic leftist racists who are making everything worse. And Scott Adams was using hyperbole to basically attack their position, to say, if that's the game they're playing, this will be the result and the advice you'd have to give somebody. And it kind of sucks. Now, I'm not going to pretend to know exactly what Scott Adams is thinking. I'd actually love to interview him. So um, I'll, I'll try and reach out. But what's fascinating here is several things to understand in what is creating this problem as we see it. The, the, the issue of white liberals not wanting to be around, around white people, the issue of uh, black people, Latinos, Asian people wanting to be more around their own race. And I have the data. I'll show you from Chicago. I mean, what we have in this country and we've had for a long time is Democrats pushing racist policies which create more racism. And now post civil rights era. They are creating policies that purport to be against racism, but fan the flames to an extreme degree. Now, I think that's, to a certain degree, the point Scott Adams was trying to make. He used extreme hyperbole and said on on the show with Hotep Jesus, I think most people can see it. Unfortunately for Scott, most people can't, but I don't think he cares. He said he knows the price of free speech is high, the cost is high, and no one's willing to pay it, but he would be willing to pay it. So I guess what I can say in, uh, initially as, and to address my video from the other day, I do not I, I would not go about explaining these issues in the same way as Scott Adams, which to me feel provocative 
But that was the, a part of the point I think he was trying to make in that he was creating space for a conversation and effectively attacking critical race theory and the outcomes it has produced. To put it simply, if we are, if, if we are to be told that, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll quote, to, I think C.J. Pearson said, said this. There's a video I saw, I think it was from Vice, where he's like, you have black people going to schools and being told by white people they can't succeed. The system won't let them. That is not a message of hope. That is a message of suppression and oppression, telling people they'll never succeed. You can't do that. I completely agree. You need to tell people you can succeed if you work hard, regardless of your background, race, history, etc. Well, let's get started with the news, and then we'll walk through this, and I'll show you some of the context. Elon Musk tweets support for Dilbert creator after racist tirade. It's interesting. That's actually not true. It was not a racist tirade. It was hyperbolically criticizing a situation the left has created with critical race theory. And don't get me wrong. You can argue that the way he went about it, and that's what they'll try and play, was like, well, he shouldn't have said it this way. That makes it racist. So let me show you what we have here. Well, I, actually, let me show you the, uh, I think they have the, the tweet. Oh, CNN doesn't have it. The tweet from uh, Elon Musk right here. I don't agree with everything Scott says, but Dilbert is legit funny and insightful. We should stop canceling comedy. What I said the other day is, you should, Scott Adams should not be canceled. Dilbert should not be canceled. People are allowed to have opinions, albeit bad ones, as long as the product they produce doesn't push negative opinions or anything like that. The idea, they, the reason they're canceling Dilbert is to punish Scott Adams for having an opinion they don't like. And in reality, an opinion for the most part, they didn't quite understand. But let's, let's break this down. Scott Adams tweeted, Dilbert has been canceled from all newspapers, websites, calendars, and books because I gave some advice everyone agreed with. My syndication partner canceled me. Dilbert and more will only be available on the subscription site scottadams.locals.com when sorted out. He says, because I gave some advice everyone agreed with. Yeah, okay, still being a little bit hyperbolic. I don't know if I would completely agree, and I don't think it's fair to say everyone agreed. It's a bit absolute. But the point he was making attacked critical race theory. They are creating an environment where race becomes a, a principal component in your motivations as to who you want to live around and why. And that sucks. But then I don't know if I would I would follow the advice of if you're a black man, move to an uh, all white area. He's got a logical point that makes sense. But there's other things to consider than just getting a job. That being said, it's unfortunate but based on critical race theory, and I'll just cite Derek Bell, they, the left has long advocated for racial segregation. And Scott Adams saying, well, this is the logical conclusion. So here's the advice you get. At least that's my interpretation of it. J.D. Carter is a ver he's verified on Twitter. He's a YouTuber, fitness coach and music producer says, been following you for a while because you're an interesting thinker, but telling people to move away from black people is a big yikes moment. I've only seen clips that may be taken out of context, so I'll give you the benefit of the doubt. Clarifying your position might help. All right. And he does. Just realize you've addressed this in more context. I'm checking it out before jumping to conclusions. But I'm in the minority. Most will not look any deeper. Most are looking to be recreationally offended. After hearing his clarification of the clip, and I, I want to clarify, and this is kind of stupid, but this is the game being played. This guy, Jay, apparently is a black fitness coach. He's a black man. He says, after hearing his clarification of the clip, Scott is right. But the way he expressed his point wasn't smart because people are stupid and can't sense hyperbole. People want to want to be recreationally offended. It's easy to clip the stream, making him seem racist. In fact, he goes into great detail about how he opposes uh, discriminating, discriminating against people based on race, that you should not take this into consideration. But again, the greater context is this is something the left has created. I want to show you this study, too, to make this point drive it home. From Yale Insights, Yale.edu, an old story. White liberals present themselves as less competent in interactions with African Americans. A new study suggests that white Americans who hold liberal sociopolitical views use language that makes them appear less competent in an effort to get along with racial minorities. Heavens me, conservatives don't do this. What ridiculous world are we living in? Elon Musk, of course, then comes to the defense of Scott Adams saying we should stop canceling comedy. And Scott Adams says, thank you. The funny thing is people then immediately jump to the out of context hyperbole of what Scott Adams was actually portraying. Scott Adams tweeted this February 26th. Worse than I thought. 
Steve Murr says the Gallup numbers on race relations in the U.S. are striking. They make a very good case that we are not on the right track with a racial essentialism approach, which is the underlying theme in too many DEI initiatives. Let's look at some of the data and see if you agree. In the first poll, we can see, as I showed this yesterday, would you say race relations between white and black people are very good, somewhat good, somewhat bad, or very bad? And you can see that over time, it is getting worse. Race relations are getting worse in this country. Why is this? I think the issue is the left. They go on TV, they go in schools, and they repeatedly just tell everybody how evil white people are and how things be- uh, about how, how bad things are getting. Steve Murr says, race relations as viewed by black adults and white adults are down substantially in my lifetime and trending lower. In 1963, 70% of black Americans said race relations would eventually be worked out. By 2021, just 40% felt that way. In 2001, 63% of Americans said race relations between black and white Americans were very or somewhat good. By 2021, only 42% of Americans believed that. Perhaps it is fair to say Scott Adams probably could have navigated this subject more tactfully, but it seems like he wanted to drop a nuclear bomb on the conversation. And that's what he said, that, uh, uh, you know, the cost of free speech is high and he wanted to pay it. So he made this statement. I, I get what he was saying. Uh, and the reality is this. It was shocking and offensive. And Jay is correct. People want to be recreationally offended. So CNN calls it a, uh, a, a racist tirade because they're not interested in actually pursuing the greater context. And there's also the fault of, I mean, even to, me, to my degree, falling into a similar trap in seeing these clips, watching them. And I even said, I mean, there's probably some context I'm missing, but Scott Adams, he, 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 played, he, he, he played a chess move. And what he did was he attacked two things, critical race theory, the, the leftist racist, you know, racial industrial complex, and our short attention spans that for many of us are incapable of, of watching a two hour long show to understand that he essentially did this thing where he's like, here's what I think. Because of this, I am now going to talk for, for three minutes and sound very, very offensive based on this ideology, says the thing, and then goes on Hotep Jesus is so and clarifies exactly what he meant by it and why he did it. Of course, everybody grabs the clip. And I think Jay's tweet was really good when he said, I'm, I know there's context missing, so I'll give you the benefit of the doubt. And then he goes, OK, yeah, you know what? He's actually right. And Scott Adams says, you know, this was funny because when I saw him tweet, no one's disagree with my point. And I'm like, your point about moving away from black people because of it, because of these racial tensions. I'm like, you could have done it better. And then I see his greater point was I, my interpretation of it. I could be getting this wrong is that leftist critical race theory is creating racial animosity in which the end result is going to be segregation. What other advice are these leftists going to be giving people than this? And it's like, oh, OK, I see what he's saying. The left does these critical race theory events where actually I think I have the story pulled up. Let me see if I can. uh, Here we go. This is from uh, September 11th, 2020. University of Michigan Dearborn apologizes for segregated virtual cafes meant to spur discussion about race. This is exactly the problem that I at the very least I think I, I, I would need to talk to Scott Adams about it. This is the problem that I think he's addressing. Critical race theorists and leftists are pushing for segregation. Well, what if, if you were following this, these ideas and this ideology, then what else would you tell someone? They're literally doing it in schools and at universities. Take a look at this from at the rabbit hole 84 on Twitter. Whatever one may think of what Scott Adams says, Scott Adams says comments on race. There is very little room to deny the legacy media's role in worsening race relations over the past decade. So essentially, Scott Adams says another point. If you have a media that is repeatedly telling people to hate each other, why would you want to be around a group of people that hates you? It's dangerous. The, the media and the left are creating an environment where race relations are getting worse. And now you run the risk as a white person of, you know, in this poll, 26 percent of people saying they don't agree with it's OK to be white, 21 or so percent saying they're not sure if it's OK. So what, you want to go around people who don't think it's OK to be white? 
he actually does say the data is probably bad. This is another funny component of it. Ian last night was saying on Timcast IRL, so what, they polled a thousand people and now Scott Adams seems to think? It's funny because Scott Adams literally said the poll is probably junk. It's a big component of what he talks about. Polling is junk. And he says with Hotep Jesus in the segment that people will interpret the question in different ways. So it's not really a good basis for an argument. And then you're like, wait a minute. If Scott Adams is arguing the polling isn't that good and people are criticizing him, telling him the polling isn't good, that just basically means no one actually listened to what he was he was really saying. And yeah, you know, of course, I fall into that. I didn't see the full show he did. And then people said, Tim, you got this wrong. You need to watch what he told Hotep, Hotep Jesus. He actually addressed what pe- he, he addressed this before people said it to him. It's actually quite amazing. Now take a look at this from The New York Times. Can my children be friends with white people? This is an actual article from November 11th, 2017. I've talked about it before. And this is essentially what he's talking about. Why is the New York Times running this? Why, is, why, why are these the ideas that they want people to, to talk about? Now, I'm all about free speech when it comes to ideas. But you have to understand the corporate press is pushing this, encouraging this and arguing in favor. Here's what they wrote. The New York Times, my oldest, my oldest son, wrestling with a four year old's happy struggles, is trying to clarify how many people can be his best friend. My best friends are you and mama and my brother. And but even a child's joy is not immune to the ominous political period. This summer's images of violence in Charlottesville prompted an array of questions. But some people hate others because they are different. I offer lamely a childish but distinct panic enters his voice. But I'm not different. Blah, 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 blah. Meaningful relationship. History is provided. Yada, yada. Blah, 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 blah. What's surprising is I am heartbroken by it all. It is only for African-Americans who grew up in such a place that watching Mr. Trump is so disorienting. For many weary minorities, the ridiculous thing was thinking friendship was possible in the first place. It hurts only if you believed friendship could bridge the racial gorge. OK. The New York Times ran an article basically, basically saying we are so sad that we thought we could be friends with you, but you're a different race. That's an insane thing to say. It's insane and it's unfortunate, but the reality is critical race theory long has argued in favor of segregation. Critical race theory, Derek Bell on Wikipedia. The 1954 Brown v. Board of Education case ignited Bell's interest in studying racial issues in the educational system. Long story short, they say, Bell studied and wrote about the effects of desegregation, noting that this decision was not due to a moral shift in nature, but rather because on the convergence of efforts of dismantling Jim Crow laws and racial segregation. Additionally, It had to do with the concern of the white elite that the U.S. would lose the battle to communism and tarnish their reputation and global influence. He basically argues that people would be better off if they kept racial segregation because it would it would create. Well, the long story short of it, these critical race theory ideas argue that the black community had their own wealth structure and ending segregation placed them underneath white people in the economy. What what he's basically saying is, and, uh, and I understand the point he's making. If black people have limited wealth because of slavery and they don't own houses and property, but they create a segregated economy where they have their own hierarchical structure of wealth, their economy is now working. Then there is the white economy, which is larger because of generational wealth. If you then push these two together, it places the white economy above the black economy, suppressing the black economy. That was his argument. I completely disagree with his view and think segregation is completely wrong. He's making a point. I understand he is a black dude who experienced this. And here's what he thinks. And I can respect the opinion. But I think over the past several decades, desegregation has been a very, 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 very good thing and has only expanded wealth. The problem is not desegregation. It is actually more segregation pushed by the woke CRT, the far left, etc., who have created policies that have been damaging to racial minorities and have created more racial animosity, which is effectively Scott Adams's point. So I'm watching 1923, uh, not Yellowstone. Yellowstone is, is on hiatus. I'm always going to find a way to work it in. But this is culturally relevant. In the 1923 show, there is a subplot uh, being pursued. Spoiler alerts. I'm going to give you, you know, come on. The show came out last week. Spoiler alerts. You are being warned. If you're watching the show 1923 on the Paramount Network, I will say it one more time. Spoiler alerts. 
part of the a subplot right now about miscegenation. And it's a man who married an Asian woman. And the police come and arrest the woman and beat the man and call his children mongrels. You can certainly understand how that resonates with me because that's like I would be the mongrel. And it's crazy to think that's how things were back in the day. A bunch of states had laws saying you could not cohabitate based on race. That's a world that people like Derek Bell wanted under this guise of protecting the economy for the black community. Well, for someone like me, I say, F you, I don't want to live in a world where I don't have a place to stand. You see, this is the problem with critical race theory. This is the problem with woke left racism and literal white supremacy, not stupid leftist white supremacy, in that in a world for which I would exist, the critical race theorists would leave me in limbo. So screw you. I don't want to be there. I have had Asians argue to me I am not Asian enough. And then I've actually had white nationalists call me the quote unquote global citizen. And I'm like, I don't want to live in either of those worlds. Second class to both racial ideologies. F that. How about we live in a world where you're an American first? So I get Scott Adams's point. And you can take a look at Yale and this study to understand what he's really getting across. That being said, perhaps he could have done a better job. But you know what he did? Scott Adams dropped a nuke on the conversation. They're canceling Dilbert. Well, you know, he said he tweeted something like, now I'm free. And I totally get his point. Work is hard. Waking up every day, sometimes getting things wrong, trying to address these conversations, having death threats of people coming at you, trying to destroy you. There's a freeing thing jumping through those flames. And Scott Adams apparently tried to do it. Could he have phrased it better? I think the answer to that question is 100 percent. Yes. But I understand what he did and why he did it. And I think you need to understand he is not saying quite literally to get away from black people. That that wasn't his point. Uh, I don't know how you address a, a conversation like that in a world where people live in soundbite social media. And that's another issue I think he inadvertently or on purpose addressed the short attention span of the Internet and people's inability to watch a multi hour long podcast to fully understand what he said and why he said it. The day before, I made a similar point. Not in terms of white and black race relations. I said that if you go on these shows and say something, they will clip it and they will take you out of context because it's politically expedient and, and gives them an edge. So if I said something like something like this, uh, imagine some guy w- was on the news and said, Vladimir Putin should nuke Ukraine right now and end the war because I'm sick of America wasting money on this country. Imagine someone said something crazy like that. Man, wouldn't that be crazy? So clearly, I wasn't speaking literally. I wasn't speaking from my own perspective. I was quoting hypothetically a different person. What these organizations will do is they'll clip out only that point and then say, Tim Pool, quote, because literally, they can argue in court, Tim Pool did say it. Ah, yes, but removing the fact that I was saying, could you imagine if someone said, and then the thing, which shows I didn't mean what was being said. I was critical of the idea. But they can still apply it to you. And that's the important thing about context. Scott Adams could have come out and said something like, could you imagine if a person came out and actually said, you should get away from et cetera, et cetera. Then they clip it and say, look at this racist tirade. Scott Adams talking with Hotep Jesus, who is a black man, went into great detail about how he believes in individualism and responsibility and you should not discriminate against people and why he, dis- he doesn't like racism and things like this. And I think the greater picture he's painting is white liberals, critical race theory and the world they're creating is going to create race- racial conflict. And I've talked about this before, that if you repeatedly tell people to hate each other based on race or that race is a component of whether or not they can succeed, they're going to start hating people based on race. I was at a skate park once, 15 or so years ago, and I knew this, uh, this uh, Latino guy. I think he was like, I think he might have been Mexican or he was South American. And one day we're skating and he just says something about hating white people. And I was like, what? And he said, all they do is lie, cheat and steal. They steal land. They steal everything. And I was like, bro, come on, man. You can't live in this world where you hate people based on their race. We're fighting against that. We're moving beyond that. 
You can look back at history and be like the Aztecs tortured children and ripped their hearts out. I'm not going to blame some modern, you know, descendant or Mexican guy for that stuff. I'm going to be like, are you a good dude or a bad dude? But this is what people create with racist ideologies. Okay, I'll wrap it up there. But you get the point. So I'll just say this. Be careful about the mainstream media. We're, we're not invincible. So, you know, I think that is important context to uh, an, an addendum to the segment I did yesterday because I certainly missed the Hotep Jesus show. I didn't I didn't know it existed. I didn't know that Scott Adams actually talked with Hotep Jesus and said, here's what the show is about. Actually addressing the show before the media went after him and before Dilbert got canceled, he predicted it was going to happen. And then he explained his position. I could be getting some of his position wrong still because it was a very, very long show. And I watched like 30 minutes of it. But I think there's an interesting point to be made about what the left is doing in terms of race relations. Next segment is coming up at 1 p.m. on this channel. Thanks for hanging out and I'll see you all then.